Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, recently, Carlos Salazar over on Twitter reached out and asked if I could make a video about uh, hosting a Presto Shop instance in Docker. So I thought I would take a moment to uh, actually show you how to do that and uh, kind of learn from some of the mistakes that I made this morning when I originally tried to make this video. So here we are on my desktop and you can see that this is the uh, the Presto Shop website. Uh, if you want to more, know more information about Presto Shop, that sort of thing, uh, this is a, a great place to, uh, to come and check out. Um, actually, there was one more URL here that I wanted. Uh, I want to go to hub.docker.com. Uh, there it is. And we're going to take a look at Presto Shop over here just real quick. Um, one thing I do want to say is that uh, this will not work um, if we come over here. Uh, this will not work on a Raspberry Pi device. This needs to be an Intel, an AMD, a desktop or server grade processor. A Raspberry Pi just won't handle it. So uh, there's all these different tags in here. None of them say ARM. So anyway, if we come back over to the overview, uh, we can see that it was updated 24 days ago, so about three weeks. So they're doing they're doing updates on it, so that's good. Lots of supported tags. Uh, if you want to do uh, different versions, if you want to do different PHP versions, you've got options there. Uh, if we scroll down, uh, we can see that uh, Presta Shop is a free and open source e-commerce web application. Uh, a little bit further down, uh, we've got uh, some stuff over here uh, where we could run uh, a few commands to create a Docker, or sorry, to create a Presta Shop network. Uh, to then uh, set up a, a MySQL database and then to run the Presto Shop container. We don't like to do that here. We don't like to do things in command line if we don't have to. So luckily I did a little bit of, of digging around and found uh, that somebody had actually already created uh, a stack for us, a Docker Compose for us. I've modified it a little bit um, ju just to suit my needs as far as storage locations and things like that. Um, so let's just kind of take a look through this. Um, and talk about kind of what's going on here. Now, this is a version three. Um, if you're on a Portainer version 2.1.1, this is not an issue. If you're on anything less than 2.1.1 in Portainer, uh, you'll need to change this version to two. Uh, it just, it won't work. Uh, version three wasn't supported until recently in Portainer. Uh, so just know that going into this. Uh, so we've got our service. It's gonna be pressed to shop. We're gonna use their native image. Uh, we're gonna have to create a network. <clears throat> um, uh, called my Presta shop. We're going to run this on port 8181. Uh, we've got a Maria database that uh, the, this application links to and depends on. Uh, we've got some volumes here for uh, persistent data uh, for, uh, for their different uh, things here. Below that, we've got some environmental variables uh, for development mode. Um, you'll want to probably set this to one while you're setting your shop up and then change it later uh, to zero uh, when you're ready to launch your shop. Uh, we, below that, we've got a database uh, server, uh, a username, a password, and a database name. And we've also got uh, auto install set to zero. Uh, if you want to know more about these environmental variables, uh, you can come back over to uh, this hub.docker.com. And all of them are down here where you can kind of check out what's going on, where they are, or what, what they do, that sort of thing. So and below that, we've got a Maria database, pretty standard stuff here. Uh, I do encourage you to change uh, the root password uh, just for, for security purposes, um, but you'll want to make sure that you uh, take care of that. Below that, uh, we've got something new in here that we've never talked about on the channel before, and that's PHP My Admin. Uh, basically, it, it's a user, a graphical user interface uh, that you access through a web page that lets you manipul manipulate databases, tables, cells, things like that, uh, much, much easier. And we're actually going to have to use this uh, here in a little bit to manipulate the database uh, in order to get the site set up properly. Uh, it's not as bad as it sounds, I promise. It's just something I discovered when I first recorded this video uh, earlier this morning, uh, ran into some issues and had to manipulate the database to get things to work. So um, so anyway, we'll, we'll, we will use PHP My Admin uh, here a little bit later on. And then below that, of course, we've got our network uh, set up down here. And then uh, I also put a link to the original post where I found this stack uh, to give credit to the original uh, creator of said stack. So uh, what we want to do is come over to uh, Portainer. Uh, I may already have this in here, but we're going to, uh, we're going to, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Um, so like I mentioned uh, here, uh, we're using this My Presta Shop network. Uh, we've got it uh, located here in a few different spots. So uh, you're not going to have that. So what you'll do is come over here to networks, click on add a network, uh, just paste that in there, leave everything else in here alone and click create. And, and then we're good to go. 
Uh, beyond that, if we come over here to our stacks, um, in fact, I will, I will just, uh, let's just remove that. Yeah, like so. Um, do, 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 give it a second. There we go. So we'll come to stacks. We'll click on add a stack. Uh, we're just going to come back over to here. I'm going to click into here. Oops. Just going to copy this like so. Uh, and then I'm going to delete uh, some of this like there. Okay. And then of course we want to give our stack a name. Uh, so this should be good to go. Um, also, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, I've already downloaded these images uh, during my testing and that sort of thing. Uh, so this will go very quickly for me, uh, relatively speaking, when I come down here and click on deploy the stack. Um, <clears throat> but if we come over here and look, just so you got an idea, uh, the Maria database is, uh, is right here um, and it is about 400 megs. Um, oh, actually it's gonna be this one right here. Uh, it's about 400 megs. Um, PHP my admin about 500 megs almost and Presta shop is about one gig So you're gonna have to download about two gigs worth of data uh, For these images to make them deploy. So just kind of something to keep in mind there um, But once you've got all of this set up uh, and of course you can change this port if you need to You already got something on 8181 you can change it to you know 8282 or, or, or whatever So let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> Then we'll scroll down and we'll click on deploy the stack It'll give us a minute to do its thing. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about some stuff. Okay, so that's done. So let's come over to here uh, and let's take a look uh, at our logs here. So, okay, this is good. This says that it's uh, it's going through its setup process. Uh, so we'll give this a minute to do its thing uh, while it kind of goes through this process and then we'll come back. Okay, easy enough. Once we get to this Apache 2 uh, D foreground, that's usually a good indicator that uh, we're where we want to be. So I'll go ahead and click here. Hopefully we get an install script to pop up. Okay, there we go. This is good. Now, if you've watched my other videos in the past, you'll know that this is typically where we stop, uh, at least for a moment. And then we go over to uh, to Cloudflare and we set up Cloudflare and then we point uh, our Cloudflare, our, our, our subdomain to, to my home address. And then we point uh, Nginx proxy manager to our container. That's This is normally the time where we do all of that configuration stuff. And then we actually do the install uh, through the domain name versus the local IP address. Now, the problem with that that I discovered this morning is that uh, this script for uh, Presta Shop is gonna take a few minutes uh, because it's got a lot of information to go through and set up and whatnot. The problem is that Cloudflare on the free tier uh, times out after 100 seconds. And that just isn't enough time for Presta Shop to install. So what we're gonna have to do is actually install everything locally. Uh, and then once we've got that, then we can go in and manipulate the database using PHP My Admin. Again, it's only like four different things that we have to change, so it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, but once once all of that's done, once we manipulate the database, then we can go over to uh, Cloudflare, set up our domain name, go to Nginx Proxy Manager, point the domain name to our container, and then we can go from there. So what we wanna do is uh, come over here and click on Next. Uh, of course, you'll wanna read this, make sure you actually agree. For the sake of the video, I do. I'm gonna click Next. Uh, the shop name, again, because I'm super original, let me DB Tech. I'm gonna select my main activity as uh, computer hardware and software. Uh, you can choose whether or not you wanna install demo products. Uh, if this is your first time using Presta Shop, I encourage you to do that. Uh, check it out, see how things, are, how things work, that sort of thing. And then come back, reinstall uh, with no demo products, and then kind of go through the process of building out your own product line. Uh, below that, we've got our country. You can select that as necessary. Uh, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select Mountain Time. Uh, my name, so then my email address and a password like so. And then we'll scroll down and click next. Okay, so now this is where we're going to, uh, we're gonna split this into kind of a split screen setup here. Oops, like so. So our database server address is gonna be MariaDB. Our database name, uh, which is over here somewhere, is right there. That's already set up. Our database login is set to root, uh, where we can see that right here. Um, so that's good. Now our database password, uh, we're just gonna paste that in there. And then what we'll do is we'll test our connection. Our database is connected, so we're good to go there. We'll go ahead and uh, bring that back up. We'll click next. 
Now, this is the part that takes a while. Um, I'm set up on a virtual machine with uh, four Xeon cores, uh, four gigs of DDR4 ECC uh, RAM, um, and as much hard drive space as I could ever possibly use. And this is going to take a while. So um, uh, maybe maybe go grab a cup of coffee or, or lunch or, or a snack. Maybe go for a jog. Whatever you got to do to kill a few minutes, uh, I encourage that because uh, this will take a little while uh, to complete. Uh, but once it is complete, uh, then we'll move on to the next step of actually manipulating the database to get the URLs set up the way we want them. And we'll go through and set up um, Cloudflare and Nginx Proxy Manager. Okay, so here we are several minutes later and the installation is done. Uh, right here it's saying, for security purposes, you must delete the install folder. So let's do that next. I'm gonna go ahead and pop open PuTTY. Yep, I'm gonna use PuTTY. You can use whatever SSH program you wanna use. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in. Uh, 137, of course. Oh, it's in the wrong window. Always, always, always. All right, so I'm gonna log in as root. And then we're gonna CD into SRV slash configs uh, slash uh, press to shop. That's where we installed it. So what I wanna do is do an LS just so we can take a look. Oh, then we need to do a CD into SRC and then an LS and right, 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 right here is our install folder. So what we wanna do is just rm-rf uh, install. And if we do an LS again, <clears throat> Uh, install, the install text is there, uh, but the install uh, folder is not. So next thing we wanna do um, is go over here and delete that and just type in admin so that we can get another error message or another display message here. Uh, we'll give this just a second to to load up. Uh, but basically it's saying, hey, you, you, you have to rename the admin folder, which I think is brilliant. Uh, if you just leave it as admin, it would be too easy for people to figure out uh, how to get into your system. So we're gonna have to rename the admin folder. So I'm gonna change that. Uh, and of course the admin folder is located right there. So what we're gonna do is just MV for move. Uh, we're gonna type an admin and I'm gonna type in DB tech admin and then I'll do an LS. And then right here is that new admin folder. So we're, we're good to go there. Uh, that part is done. So what we'll do is we'll delete that and we'll type in DB tech admin. Here we go. So I'll say uh, my email address. All right, so here we are, we're logged in. Everything's set up and ready to go, but we're not done yet. So what we're gonna do is minimize this. We're gonna come back over to here. Uh, what I wanna do first um, is I've got uh, this domain name right here, dnb.wtf, picked it up on pork bun for like three bucks. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I've already got this A record pointed to my home IP address, which you can't see. Um, so you've got a couple of options. You could, well, you have to add a new record. You could set up an A record here uh, if you wanted to and type in, uh, you know, like I'm gonna type in shop and then I could put in my IP address. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just type in a C or give it a C name. The target then just becomes at, um, then, then it will just point to uh, the A record here. And then we'll have shop.dnb.wtf. I'm gonna save that. We're gonna set this to not be proxied. We want this to be DNS only for the time being. We're gonna click save. Then we'll come over to Nginx Proxy Manager. We're gonna add a proxy host. We're gonna put that in there. Uh, my IP address is 137 and the port is 8181. We're gonna block that. Uh, we're going to request a new certificate, check these boxes and click save. So this will set up our, our domain name and then route it uh, from a modem to my router to my container um, and then we'll be able to connect to it. Now, if I click on this, it's going to have a fit. It's not gonna work right, but I'm gonna click it anyway. All right, and you can see that it, it redirected me to here, which actually means things are working the way we want them to sort of. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back over here to Portainer uh, right here. We're going to open up PHP My Admin. Um, and we're just gonna click that. This is gonna take us over to here. We're gonna go to Presta Shop on the left. And, and there are a couple of things that we need to look for. So we're gonna scroll down. We're looking for PS Shop Domain. Let's scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, shop URL, there it is. So what we're gonna do is change this uh, to uh, shop.dnb.wtf, oops, F, not D. Like that, we're gonna change both of these. 
like so. Come back up to here. Then we're going to go to search and we're going to type in SSL. Then we'll scroll down. Uh, we're looking for three matches in configuration. We'll go here. <clears throat> uh, SSL, we want to turn this on. We're going to set that to one instead of uh, zero. Uh, SSL enabled everywhere. Again, we're going to set that to one instead of zero. And then for this SSL URL, we're going to put in shop.dnb.wtf. Of course, anytime I say shop.dnb.wtf, that's going to be your domain name for that. So I believe with all of that having been done, uh, let's come over here and click this again. Hey, look at that. Now we're on shop.dnb.wtf. Uh, we'll do a DB tech admin. Uh, let's go ahead and get logged in. Oops. Man, uh, DB Tech Reviews. I can't even remember my own email address this morning. Okay, so now you can go through um, and, and kind of go through this process of getting familiar with the shop. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can close that. Uh, but basically everything here set up, ready to go. Now you've got Presto Shop on a Docker container uh, that's configured behind an SSL using uh, Cloudflare and Nginx Proxy Manager. There's one more thing we want to do though, now that I think about it, is come back to Cloudflare uh, switch this from DNS only to proxy and click save. Uh, it just adds a little bit more security to your system, to your domain, that sort of thing. So there you go. There's how to set up Presta Shop on Docker uh, behind a domain name and whatnot. So hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, man, it's been a morning. Do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. Would really mean a lot to me. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, get subscribed. Only about 30% of my viewers are subscribed. So it'd be uh, great if you'd consider subscribing for more content like this uh, about three days a week. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the support. Very, very much appreciated. If you want to become a patron or you want to become a channel member, all of that will be available either below the video directly or in the description down below where you'll find all of the information you'll need in order to uh, go through this process and set up Presto Shop for your yourself. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.